Hey, sixth graders, it's Mr. McMahon, and today we're going to start the last video in our series on the Middle Ages. And I think for many of you, this is probably your favorite uh, lecture of the entire year, because today we talk about the bubonic plague. We talk about the Black Death, um, a plague, a, bacter a bacteria plague that killed, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 million people. We don't know exactly, but it's somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and so what we're going to look at today is, how did it begin? How did, what were the origins? Where did it start from? And probably more importantly is how did it change Europe? What's its impact on Europe? How did it change feudalism? That's what we're going to look at today. So, um, again, for many students, this is their favorite lecture of the whole year because we're dealing with death and dying and disease, and um, they just enjoy it. So I uh, hope you learned something about the Black Death, also known as the bubonic plague today. So today we're going to be talking about the bubonic plague or black death. And so we got South Carolina Standard 655 summarized the origins, the beginnings, and the impact, or how did it change, how did the bubonic plague change feudalism. So before we begin, I want you to kind of think about uh, here in the year 2016, we got the Zika virus down in Brazil. In the year 2014, we had Ebola virus over in West Africa. Yet we live here in South Carolina. So... Why should I even be scared that of Ebola or Zika? I mean, again, I'm in North America. Ebola is across the Atlantic Ocean in Africa, and Zika is in South America. So t take a moment, think about it. Why should we even be scared or concerned about Zika or Ebola? Hopefully the answer you came up with is the reason we're scared is that due to trade or even travel, these two viruses could come into South Carolina. And that's going to be similar to the bubonic plague. It, it basically went from Asia to Europe due to trade. Some essential vocabulary for today. Uh, you should know what a plague is. It's actually a bacterial disease. You would have a fever. You become delirious. Origin is where something begins. Feudalism. Hope you know this by now. It's a social hierarchy system. You have lords and nobles who give fiefs of land to the vassals and knights below them, and in return for that, the vassals and knights pledge allegiance. And then the word impact of. This is when something has a strong effect on something or someone and usually causes change. So the objectives for the end of this uh, lecture. Can you tell me where and how bubonic plague began? And second, what was its impact on feudalism, or how did it change feudalism? So bubonic plague, first of all, it was a deadly plague. It slept, swept through Europe between 1347 and 1351. We're going to learn later that in four years, uh, at least 25 million people are dead due to the Black Plague or Black Death bubonic plague. So what about its origins? Where does this thing begin? So if you look on the right-hand side of the map, the east side is Asia, and you'll see those dates over there by China. And then it spreads along the Silk Road, this trade route we learned about earlier. You know, it spread Buddhism from India to China. Well, it also spreads the bubonic plague, the Black Death, from Asia to Europe. You'll notice it goes through this important trade city of Constantinople, the city we talk a lot about in the ancient world, and eventually gets over to Europe. So the Silk Road in trade was responsible, and merchants and traders along the Silk Road didn't know they were spreading it. It wasn't something done on purpose. So how does someone get infected with Black Plague? First of all, an infected rat gets bit by a flea, and then flea bites human. And now human has bubonic plague. So from rat to flea to human. Do you notice how quickly it spreads through um, Europe as it comes from Asia in 1347, the oranges area? All of green is by 1348, and then 1349, the yellowish area has the plague, then 1350 is the purple, and then northern Europe by 1351. So it spreads pretty quick along the trade routes. There's a deadlier form of bubonic plague that spreads through the air, much like our flu, much like our cold that's airborne. People, bubonic plague can also be spread through the air. So how do you know if you got bubonic plague? Well, you will have symptoms called buboes on your victim body. Usually you'll find them on your neck where your glands are or your armpit area where your lymph nodes are. You'll have swellings there and they'll be like bulbs. And that's how you know you have bubonic plague. So how do you take care of the sick? Or at least in the Middle Ages, how did you take Well, in the Middle Ages, and this is a picture of a doctor, um, 
they didn't know what caused bubonic plague. They didn't know how to treat the sick in the Middle Ages. And so, again, we get 25 million people dead because of the ignorance or the not knowing of how to treat the sick of the bubonic plague in the Middle Ages. So what did people in the Middle Ages think caused bubonic plague? Well, they thought at first, you must have been with the devil, so it's punishment from the devil. Or they blame the Jews for maybe the Jews wanted to wipe out the Christians. Maybe it's on astrology. Maybe it's because, you know, if you were born in August and you're a Leo, maybe you're going to get it. Or maybe it was a superstition. Maybe you saw a black cat that day, so you're going to get bubonic plague. So these are some of the reasons that people thought you got bubonic plague in the Middle Ages. We think here in 2016, we kind of laugh at this and say, this is silly. This is what people believed in the Middle Ages. So how would a doctor cure it? First of all, let some of your bad blood out. So bloodletting, let some of that bad blood out, or maybe cure it with some herbal medicine um, that would cure it. Uh, these cures did not work for bubonic plague, but this is what they used in the Middle Ages. So what's its impact? Since they didn't know really what caused it and they didn't know how to treat it, how does it impact? First of all, it kills people on all parts of the social spectrum. Kings to serfs and peasants, you can get bubonic plague and you could die. Approximate numbers, 25 million people dead in Europe. Again, these are approximate. We don't, there's no exact count. One third to 33% of all Europe's population died from bubonic plague. So if you look at the diagram, the red area is the people that survived bubonic plague. The blue is the 33% of the population that died from bubonic plague. So what's its impact? How does it change Europe? First of all, you got 25 million people dead. Next. So now you have less workers on your Lord's Manor. There are less serfs to do the work. So now the serfs that are left say, wait a minute, I would want fair wages for my work. Other serfs say, you know what, I'm leaving the manors, I'm going to the city. There's less people in the city, I'm going to take their jobs and make more money. So no peasants and no serfs means the feudalism and the manorial system basically end. They crumble because there's no serfs to do the amount of labor that the lords and nobles need because of the bubonic plague and because of less workers. But it also affects the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church couldn't stop the plague. Remember, they think it's because you had the you were consorting with the devil. So since the church couldn't stop it, the power of the Roman Catholic Church declines, and eventually we get the Renaissance and Reformation. Um, so for a number of reasons, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, its power declines. Also, we get a culture of death during the Middle Ages. Poetry and nursery rhymes, you may have heard of this one. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. This comes from the time period of the Black Death. So your poetry, your nursery rhymes about your paintings in the top left, your stained glass in the bottom middle. Your paintings and sculptures about the Black Death because your culture around you is all about the Black Death. And so people wrote about it, people drew about it, people painted about it. So you see a lot of paintings and artwork from this time period in the Middle Ages that dealt with death. So that was today's lecture um, on the bubonic plague, uh, Black Death, um, dealing with the Middle Ages. Remember our two goals. Uh, two of the things I really want you to know is, do you know how it originated? Where did it begin? How did it get from Asia over to Europe? Hope you know it's through trade routes, the Silk Road. And also, do you know how it impacted feudalism? What changed for feudalism? Well, after the Black Death, feudalism has gone. The serfs have wanted to be paid for the work. The serfs are going to move to the city to find work. So it really changes feudalism and it changes Europe in almost in a good way. Um, for getting rid of feudalism. So that's it for the Middle Ages. Uh, the next lecture series we'll talk about will be we'll be talking about the Renaissance, which is a rebirth of time. It's back to learning, uh, back to learning like the Greeks and the Romans. Till then, see you later.